Hello the people of Western here, welcome to part 0 of my playthrough of Ozymandias, also known as Ozymandias Bronze Age Empire sim, designed to help you decide whether you want to watch the whole thing. I'll go over three matters, what the game is, how I feel about it, and what the playthrough is like. Uncharacteristically, I will also explain every single rule in the game, so you can understand what I'm doing, or jump right into the game if you decide to buy it. Ozymandias is a forex game pulled down to the bare minimum, and it works like a charm. Let's get right into how the game works. Let's start with time and space. Time and space are each divided strictly, or you could say discreetly, into parts, time into turns, space into tiles. Here are all the tile types. Rivers, islands, grasslands, plains, hills, forests, deserts, and the sea. Any tile with a city on it counts as a city tile type instead. Each of these grants you resources every turn, depending on its type and any yield decks acquired. You play on a map with hexes, you can see the entire map. At any given point in time, any hex belongs to either nobody or exactly one player. Each player gets to make choices and the outcome is calculated once everyone decides, a system known as simultaneous turns. The goal of the game is to acquire a given number of victory points or crowns, all less likely to eliminate every other empire, whichever happens first. Map layouts, starting locations and factions are fixed for any given scenario. Some factions are easier to play than others. You can also adjust a separate handicap. Note that AI never gets so-called opportunities, but players always do. So with no handicap in place, the player is at an advantage. At the start of each turn you get a choice of two so-called opportunities. You can choose whichever you want, but since you can only hold on to at most three unredeemed opportunities at once, if you already have three, you'll either have to replace one or reject both the new ones. An an opportunity has a trigger and a payoff. If X, then Y. Well, the trigger can be something like press the button to redeem, or eliminate an empire, and the reward can be resource army technology. Whatever. The game features exactly four resources, knowledge, wealth, food, and power. Knowledge can be used to 1. Buy flag tags, each making flagging a given type of tile cheaper by one unit of food. 2. Buy yield tags, each giving you one more unit of the specified resource per turn per owned tile of a given type. 3. Buy power tags, each giving you one unit of power on any tile of the given type anywhere on the map, even if you don't own it. 4. You can spend it on certain opportunities. That's it. There's nothing else you can spend knowledge on. You can buy power tags indefinitely, but the cost steadily increases with each purchase. Wealth can be used for the following. 1. You can spend it directly to buy an army or a fleet. 2. You can spend it directly to reduce waste. 3. You can trade it at the end of the turn for knowledge, food and power, adjusting proportions with a slight fall. You can spend it on certain opportunities. That's it. There's nothing more you can spend wealth on. Army and fleet costs rise the more you own. Same goes for trading for power. Each point is more expensive than the last. You deploy armies in cities. You can only deploy fleets in cities next to at least one sea tile. Food can be used for the following. 1. To place flags. 2. To build cities. 3. To grow cities. 4. To move armies. 5. You can spend it on certain opportunities. That's it. There's nothing more you can spend food on. Fleets can only end their turns on sea, river or city tiles. Armies can end their moves on any tile except sea or island. Flagging allows you to stick a claim on a given tile. The cost for this is different depending on the tile type. It costs one more point for each tile away from the nearest city, one fewer point for each adjacent tile you own, one fewer point for each relevant flag tag, and a whopping 20% less if it's next to a sea tile. At the end of a turn, for each flag the tile you own, if nobody else contests a given claim by putting a flag at himself, you just get it. If a tile is contested, the empire with more power on that tile gets it. It. If empires are tied for most power though, the tied empire with more owned adjacent tiles gets it. If neither power nor adjacent tile count break the tie, nobody gets that tile and the resources spent flagging it just go to waste. This is probably the most difficult to understand rule in the game and as you can see it's really simple. Let's talk about conquest. If you have an army adjacent to a tile belonging to some other empire and you have more power in that tile than that empire at the end of the turn that tile becomes contested. If it was already contested, it becomes yours. Power in a given tile depends on the following. One, each army and fleet emanates your empire's current power onto the hex it is on and all adjacent hexes. Two, power attacks give you power globally on corresponding tile types. Three, cities emanate power around themselves but only on your own territory. They emanate power equal to the population minus radius away from them. Thus a city of four has four on its hex, three on a 
adjacent ones, two in radius 2, one in radius 3. Threatened cities only emanate power on their own tiles. Fall, owners of tiles get defensive bonuses on tiles of certain types. Hills get plus 2 power, forests and islands plus 1. When a city gets conquered, it loses one citizen. If it only had one citizen, it disappears. Empire's territory can get split into separate parts, but if a part has no cities in it, the territory there becomes unowned and units there get destroyed. Units on last tiles retreat one hex away unless it's completely impossible, in which case they get destroyed. Cities can be built on any tile you own, not adjacent to another city or enemy territory. They can be grown to size 8. Costs of both of these operations vary depending on tile type. Once you are done with your turn, having redeemed opportunities, bought tax, adjusted wealth trading, reduced waste, recruited units, built cities, flagged terrain, and moved units to your liking, you click on the hourglass and the following happens in order. 1. The wealth you've chosen to trade rather than save gets spent. 2. Every resource you have gets affected by waste according to the current waste level. You can't have less than one level of power, so only points above that go to waste. 3. You receive resources for the wealth you've spent in step 1. Note that these were not affected by waste. 4. Each of your tiles gives you resources in accordance with its type and acquired yield tax. If you don't have enough food to feed your population, your larger city loses one population, though this almost never happens. 5. Flagged territory gets distributed according to the rules I've outlined earlier. 6. Enemy tiles get conquered according to the rules I've outlined earlier. 7. Enemy tiles get threatened according to the rules I've outlined earlier. That's all the rules. Other than a couple of specific formulas, numbers and user interface descriptions, that's the game in a nutshell. I don't think you could explain, say, Master of Magic with this level of detail and so little time. <laughs> I really like Ozymandias, I've already mentioned that when describing the demo, and it holds true for the actual game, it's just complicated enough to be interesting for me, and it's a nice springboard for other 4x titles. The playthrough is live commentary from successful attempts with no audience interaction. I tend to play on scholar difficulty, though recently I've stepped up my game and uh, tried higher difficulty levels. Either way, I sincerely hope you will find this playthrough to your liking. Thanks for watching, and you will see me elsewhere. Because as you get more wealth, you can spend it on power, you pump that power, and the conquest is the result.